This is the Violent Professional Podcast. Calm down there, bud. When, when uh, we had the table, which is right there, on every episode, you hear me go, bow, 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 like tapping the shit, dude. <laughs> like, um, I think Theo Vaughn has the same issue. He has to like keep his foot. You ever see his podcast where he has his like hands down? Yeah. It's because he keeps doing it. Or he's like wringing his hands or. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's got a weird thing with his hands. Well, it's kind of like rest- restless leg syndrome, but it's your whole fucking body. Yeah. <laughs> Just can't sit still, man. Yeah. Do you ever ever have any issues with that? As All a, the fucking as time. As a kid, I particularly had issues with it. And so, like, the normal response is maybe we figure out, like, less caffeine or something like that. Maybe you don't give this kid Mountain Dew. <laughs> Instead, the solution was, like, why are the fuck are you the way you are? And go to therapy. And Here, then, let's medicate him. Yeah, medicate, dude. Man. That was... uh. I was uh, when I was a kid, I was prescribed Ritalin and Zoloft at one point, and I couldn't stand it. Like when um, I think, uh, like one of them worked for a little bit, and then I just decided to stop taking them. Or like I had, it's kind of like vitamins where you take vitamins for a while and then you just yeah. you stop or whatever, just because you like get lazy or something like that, and you're like, ah, oh, fuck, now I fucked up the whole process, and that's kind of what happened. And I think I, if I remember, because that whole time was kind of like in a weird haze. Not that I was like, uh, I had a lot of shit going on as a kid, as like a, a kid of divorce and all that stuff. Yeah. So, um, you know, um, it's not like I went into a like a hospital or something like that. You know, I, I maybe I sound weird about it, but like the uh, I was prescribed as a kid Riddle and Zoloft, and I remember one of them I did for a little bit a few months and then i stopped and then it seemed to like correct my fucking like r- ridiculous behavior of just being a fucking wild kid you know um and then i became a wild adult so <laughs> you know that's all right i talked about it on another podcast about how i used to have like ocd shit going on but i got this problem where like even when i'm sitting down watching tv or a movie or something right i just i have to be like moving like my foot will be moving Toast. Or my fucking arm will be moving you know but i or I'm clicking a pen. I have that problem. Where you have uh, I, I more than just restless leg. It's yeah. like restless body. Yeah. Where I, I yeah. got to be moving around. If I'm sitting very still, like I can do it if I consciously think about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if I'm just sitting down, I got to be like moving around, doing something. What has that contributed to? On like, this, I don't know. This because episode. I was never diagnosed for, with anything. Not, no ADD, no ADHD, yeah, yeah. nothing like that. My, my younger brother was. My older brother was. But for me, I never... Never got prescribed anything. It was more like I was just needing to be active. Like I felt my body, my body probably just wanted to be active, doing yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. Doing something. You know, um, I <clears throat> what I can appreciate about our friends group, which you don't really see with a lot of people, right? And maybe there's more that that do this that um that just aren't honest with the public or whatever, is the the amount of awareness we have about ourselves and the fact we'll fucking talk about it. Right. Like the self self deprecating type of shit. Um, my, my son saw a meme that I was working on for the, the page and it was the dumpster fire meme. So it's like the Spider-Man Tobey Maguire one he's putting on and it's the violent professional, uh, logo. If you haven't seen it, check out my Instagram cause it's fucking straight fire. Uh, it's not the greatest, but it's like I was just making content. It's the fucking greatest. Yes, it's the greatest. It's the greatest dumpster dumpster fire. Your com- your your comment. <laughs> I gotta turn this up. It's bothering me. Which one is it? I that one. That one. I don't know which one it is. That yeah, was, that's that's, that's better. Um, that's like the headset out. I just couldn't. It sounded weird. Like you sound fine, and then I'm like, <laughs> it sounds like I'm like fucking screaming from across the room. It makes me think that the whole audio is like fucked up or not plugged in, but it obviously is. Um. Yeah, he was like, he came in the room and was like, um, he saw the meme and he's like, wait a second, doesn't that mean like you you think the podcast is like a dumpster fire? I was like, exactly. And he goes, but why are you making fun of yourself? And I go, because that's the type of humor it is. It's like self-deprecating humor. Yeah. You say this shit so that if somebody tries to come at you, then like, they, got nothing they to say. fucking come at you. Um, no, if, if somebody tries to like... Uh, talk shit or make fun of you it's like how are you going to do that with a page that literally does that on every fucking yeah. post and that's the point it's like it's like there are so many pages out there and people out there that just like want to pretend like they're the shit and it's like they get they get one 
person talking shit and they're like, how the fuck, uh, you know, block. Yeah. It's like, just make fun of yourself <laughs> and people enjoy that. Those are like yeah. my most popular fucking memes that I have are just like ones where I'm like poking fun at the podcast. Oh yeah. Or, or we like, uh, you know, Photoshop each other on stupid shit, you know, yeah, it's yeah. making fun of us, you know? Yeah. Like, uh, <clears throat> What did I say? You made the one with the the wolf pack from uh, yeah, yeah. Hangover. I was like, <laughs> yeah. wish version of Hangover or something yeah. like that. Yep. Yeah, it's and it's simple and like people enjoy that and can appreciate it because, you know, how many pages out there are like putting out this stuff where it's like they're lifting weights and they're like, look at me, I'm the model, yeah. I'm motivational. Or and something. then I put like, my face on Zach Galifianakis. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> These people are out here like talking about how great they are but behind the scenes they're like beating their kids and shit you know yeah what i mean like it's like get out of the studio yeah. god <laughs> damn it my people need me the forty thousand. it's weird man people are crazy yeah that's what this episode is about crazy people <sighs> um i sound i i don't know how i sound to you but i sound like i've been deep throating like gravel or something i mean if you could deep if you could take it like <laughs> You could take it and like form it into some sort of like gravelly you dick just, and just uh, and it's like yeah cemented together and you just yeah, started yeah. shoving it down your throat and then I used it after you because I kind of sound the same way yeah and then you sat on it and I fucking ate it <laughs> <laughs> that's fucking weird well anyway that's why my ass is bleeding <laughs> that's exactly why um I anyway I have I have some things written on this paper as I like to point out as I flop it around because I. I can't fucking stop doing shit like we were talking about. Um, I fa the first thing I said is the people need us, and that's that was purely evident this week when um, I saw the numbers of uh, how many people were actually listening. So it's like it like just by putting in those two episodes, the Mega Cosmic Adventure preview, and then the one we did last week or this week. I don't know where the fuck it is. It was last week. Last week, yeah. Um, our listenership went up from what it has been, which has still been good. Mm -hmm. uh, oddly enough, people have been listening to it. So I don't understand. I, you know, I talked about it last time, but it shot up like 800%. Nice. Just with those two episodes. I was like, and that's like, it's not because it's like more listeners than it, there were when I'm doing, we're doing episodes like um, back to back to back. It's just because like the, there's been like, 800% less people. I don't even know how that fucking math works, right? <laughs> like, I said it, and I'm like, that's fucking nonsense. It's something to make you feel good. You're 800% better. But there's there's a lot of people all over the world still listening. So I was like, man, we did, I like, we got to keep doing podcasts or whatever, however the fuck it happens. I feel like I've let people down by not, not continuing, but I've got real life, so you can eat my ass. And, you know, and people appreciate that about me, telling them. They do. They, my fucking ass. It's like that part, they just take it into their brain, and it gets, like, jumbled around and lost. They're like... Because they're like, man, what a cool guy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to listen to more. Hurt me again, daddy. And I'm like, you could eat my <laughs> fucking ass. Thank you. Please follow, like, and subscribe. Um, and it was it was Halloween yesterday. No it segue. Was. Just It was Halloween yesterday. And um, I don't know if you remember the 80s or 90s, where we came from. Um, I like to call us 80s space babies. Mm -hmm. That's my new th fucking thing I was like saying it. in the caption. I like yeah. it. What did I say? A death-cheating 80s space baby. On my, <laughs> I'm not going to say what profile. Um, <laughs> dude, uh, I want to I talk about something right now, but I, I can't <laughs> because I'm going to ruin everything. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Okay. So anyway, and I probably just did. Who knows? No. No? No. Th just right over the head. The yeah. person that's listening. Yep. Um. So. <laughs> anyway, I remember from. I have. I've talked about this before on other episodes, but it's like I have a logical, illogical fears about random shit. Like I cannot leave a drink. Like if I have an energy drink or something like that, unless it's like in my space, I can't. Like, There's gonna leave be it. a creature in here. I no. It's not, gonna get into my body. No, I have. I have some <laughs> serious like fear. And it kind of like reading this article about like people putting shit in kids' Halloween candy. Oh fuck! It makes sense because I remember my my mom when I was young, like saying we have to check the candy and all this stuff, and like don't talk to strangers and stuff that's good. Like check your kids' candy. Don't talk to strangers, which is a weird concept for Halloween. You just let your kids go up to yeah 
Like you yell at them all year, like don't fucking talk to that person, and then like go, <laughs> go up to that this strange door, random house with fucking <laughs> potentially dead bo- bodies wrapped in plastic, and I'll stand pool. fifteen feet away yeah, over here because I'm antisocial. I don't want to fucking deal with the, pa- the parents. I'm be like, yeah, thanks, thanks for the free candy. Yeah, my daughter was trying to get me to ring some of the doorbells. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna stand back here. Yeah, dude, <laughs> I'll I'll kick the door down if they take you. <laughs> yeah, um, but um. So, like, logical fears that I have is, like, I can't leave a drink somewhere. Um, I was skydiving one time in Arizona, and my buddy uh, just left a drink. He, like, opened an energy drink, and they were like, hey, everybody's got to load up because we're going to, like, you're you're on this lift to go jump because you sign up and you have, you have like, your names. And then they call you over loudspeaker at the uh, drop zone in, yeah. in uh, Arizona, the one we go going to. And he just pops this energy drink, takes a sip, and he like puts it down next to his shit. And I was like, no fucking way. I was like, I'll never, you, whatever. But I, for me, I'm like, and it's never happened, which is the craziest part. And I never invite people to do it. So by me talking to this, this isn't wishing this into the fucking environment. Yeah. But like, <clears throat> I always think that someone's going to take a vial of fucking LSD and just go bloop. And I'm like, oh, in a, and like, as you're flying. Yeah. If I was like, <laughs> I've never done that. But if, if I was like prepared for it, you know, uh, that's a different story. But if I'm just like out there and all of a sudden the fucking cartoon characters and the fucking, the void opens up and reveals it's godly presence to me. I might fucking go into psychosis. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, I always have this weird and it's stupid. I understand that completely, but I have this fucking absolute fear of the fact somebody's going to drug me. I've had it happen when I was at a bar though. They gave, I got slipped a fucking roofie and oh, fucking shit. Bloop, out. And I was doing all kinds of crazy shit. You know. Some, so did somebody do that for fun or they're trying to rape your ass? <laughs> I didn't. The, nobody raped me <laughs> oh, that I fuck. know of, but fuck. I did get into a lot of trouble, to, you know, Damn. but um, it was like um, I was out with some friends and we were like there and it was like fucking however long it was quick. And I was just fucking ah, fucking gone, dude. Not like I was drunk. I just was like out fucking that period of time is gone. I heard about it later, obviously, Damn. but um, yeah. It, it's it's crazy like that and so i have like a, a logical fear i think it stems, stems well, from i don't my know i don't know necessarily if it's an illogical fear because semi-logical you've, had something, you've had something happen to you already so it's a logical fear of something that could happen again not yeah, not I'm necessarily not... will happen again it's not probable yeah but it's a logical fear to have yeah it, go, it goes as far <laughs> as sometimes if like a garage door is open and i'm like working at it and I like have a drink down there. If I've left it too long, I'm like, I'm throwing this shit up. That's fucking <laughs> that, weird. Dude. That homeless guy in the woods is gonna come shit <laughs> that my is fucking... fucking likely. That is a likely <laughs> situation. Gonna piss in my monster energy drink. What's worse, getting <laughs> drugged with like LSD or some fucking psychoactive chemical, or like a homeless dude's dick tip going in the fucking? Just... Well, it depends on if the homeless dude is on the drugs. Yeah, <laughs> he's just pissing it out. Yeah, you're... you get that secondary high. How much? <laughs> On that note, how much piss do you think people have drank or other substances without knowing it? In that scenario, like they just put a drink down and they turn and go somewhere for like a few minutes and then all of a sudden there's homeless dudes come or piss in your fucking your fucking Starbucks. <laughs> That's through good... the straw. Like through the through top. The, through the they sh- put it up their fucking giant piss holes. See, my <laughs> my rational fear would be more like some bee just came and it's inside that straw. Do you like so, a Japanese hornet or something? Something. Shit? I mean, not that fucking big, but it's what are those? Straw. What are those bugs that in like the uh, Amazon where you piss and it swims up in your dick hole? Oh God, oh, <laughs> it's a fish. Is it a fish? It's a fish. Tell me about this. I fish. forgot. I forgot the name of the fish, but um, yeah, it'll swim. It's been it's been documented. I think like twice, two or three times, where it swam up the urethra of. A male, you know, right up his junk and got lodged. It doesn't go all the way, but it, it you can't pull it out because it's got those reverse spines. So you Good Lord, man. Like dude had to have a pretty big pee hole. Yeah. For how something how to small fucking how go small up in is there. this fish or how big is this dude's it's, dick? It's hole? pretty small as far as I know, but I've never seen one actually inside somebody's penis before. Yeah. If you're asking that question. Yeah. I just know it's been documented. Yeah, yeah. Watch that Ripley's Believe It or Not or like any of those weird shows like like that. They'll talk about shit like that. The Ripley's Believe It or Not fucking museum and they have a display where it's like the fish tail sticking out of his (laughs) cock. He's like, oh. It's just on a wax. Yeah. Wax guy. I'm Coyote Peterson and I'm going to piss in this river. (laughs) (laughs) It's just fucking. It doesn't hurt. (laughs) I I remember 
like the what I saw in the video was like it didn't you know it had a reenactment of a dude swimming, and then he just like ah oh, he's in pain. They didn't show like didn't the, show anything. It's like an infographic. <laughs> yeah, didn't didn't there. have any of that, but it showed the fish afterwards. It was like you know a dried dead fish. Like we kept the fish. <laughs> good. We got it out, but that's we kept good. it. Yeah, that's good. This was in somebody's penis. I'm glad that you. I'm glad they did that. Oh, a logical fear. So, yeah, I've got that uh, that fear of that, and I think it's from that whole time as a kid, like Halloween. You know, like you're gonna you got to check it for needles, drugs, See, I all never, this other I, shit. Your parents never did that to you. No, because it was like, who the fuck would take the time to put needles in candy? You know they do I mean? though. Like, but I've never seen that. Yeah, it's not it's not very common, I don't think. But it is like people hand that shit out. They're just with a bucket of candy, just handing out fucking now, needles. Now, what I will do, and my daughter's really good about this too. We'll go through the candy, and we'll if anything's open in any way or it looks yeah, yeah. tampered with, toss it. But I mean, if something looks legit, I'm popping those M and M's. You know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? <laughs> I didn't check Jax's uh, candy last night. I should have, but I had other shit going on, which was great. Um. So yeah, it uh, it's weird because I told Jax about that. I told him while we were driving around. I was like, and it's not to scare him. I was like, you know what they used to fucking what uh warn us about when we were kids? And he's like, what? I was like, like check your candy for razor blades. Yeah, like I remember that like, going around all the time in the nineties. Yeah, like <laughs> check your check your kids' candies. They're putting razor blades in the tootsie rolls. Yeah, it, like, it is what? a real thing, dude. Like, <laughs> so what the people uh oftentimes what they finding candy is weed because that's like a, a thing uh, right cool yeah um but they're they're finding it in like the pre-packaged shit so they're just uh, that's you know, crazy. sealing it up yeah what's i mean obviously if you get something that looks homemade you fucking don't eat yeah, it right? yeah. <laughs> but if you if you're getting like a snickers and then they've somehow resealed it with <laughs> you know yeah something else in there shit um candy they found in candy they found weed, needles, staples, razors, glass, bullets. Where am I finding? I'm not finding that candy. That's what I need. Yeah. Shit. Bullet candy and crystal meth. Kids all jacked up. They're like, this kid ate too much fucking candy. They're like beating their children. <laughs> He's just grinding his teeth. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's cleaning the house <laughs> three times for three days. Yeah. How was your Halloween? It was good, man. It was great. I, I took Aria trick-or-treating. We had a uh, shit. She got a ton of candy. My neighborhood's pretty packed. There was hundreds of hundreds of people out. Yeah, I I had to dress up because she wanted me to. So it was all stuff they'd already owned. You were a uh, <clears throat> ranch hand, weren't you? Um, I was Rip you? from Yellowstone. Okay, so I haven't watched the show. <laughs> I know the guy you're talking about though. But I had all the stuff already, and I I did go buy the glasses. That's the now only that, thing I didn't have. That makes sense because. <clears throat> Your girl was wearing livestock inspector. Or yeah, some shit, livestock right? agent. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I was like, that makes sense now. I was like, he's a kid. And she already had like the, the chest rig that she, yeah, had, yeah. you know, she had on. It's a workout one, so it had, just has weights in it. So you just got a so a, she uh, velcro thing. So she went and got a velcro patch, but it didn't have livestock. It was just a blank one. She didn't want to pay forty bucks for the yeah, yeah, livestock agent yeah. one. So she went out and printed one and then just stuck it on there. Oh, cool. <laughs> That's fucking so it cool. worked. Yeah. Pretty cool. <clears throat> yeah. But yeah, I, I was I was rip, so I had the leather. I don't know why I have leather gloves, but I had them. <laughs> Were they fingerless? No, oh, no, dude, that would have been awesome. Cut those though. fingers off. I know it doesn't go with the the story. <laughs> no, but, it doesn't. But or the show. Yeah, fingerless gloves are always better. Straight um, leather. Yeah, but yeah, I was I was rip, and I you know I had the boots and the belt buckle and the hat and you know all the good shit to be a real have cowboy. Have you been preparing for this day? No, I just own a bunch of cowboy shit. Okay. I'm not a real you, cowboy. You coincidentally had that exact costume yeah. to look identical. I so the you jacket, good. I mean, the jacket, really good. the jacket that I I had that I was wearing, I bought from Costco like a month ago. <laughs> they have a surplus. I was like, hey, this is pretty nice Dude, Levi's bought, jacket. When you bought that leather jacket, did it come in? No, one it of those wasn't big, leather. That was it's pleather. No, that was a like a Levi's. Oh, okay. Did it come in one of those big plastic like no. sp- uh, <laughs> hermetically sealed fucking no. things? Where it says, but you know what? Jacket. When I was a kid. I talked my mom into buying me a leather jacket for God, Christmas. God, you're so cool, man. Oh, that was super cool. It was damn near a trench coat, which is kind of weird, right? Yeah, yeah. But I wasn't one of those type of kids. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I had this cool leather jacket that it was really like a Sunday church coat, you know what oh, I mean? Yeah. Like, I'd wear that around. The baddest little church boy <laughs> yeah. in the fucking Yeah, and then uh, 
when I got to be, I don't know, probably a sophomore in high school, I went out and bought a leather motorcycle jacket that was like blue and white. Fucking badass. So you didn't I have a motorcycle, you just did it. Yeah, you just did I just it. fucking wore that shit around. That's My buddy had one that was red and white, so we'd just wear them together. People thought you were in a fucking motorcycle game. <laughs> yeah, without they're like, the look bikes. at these fucking cool guys. Like, oh, it's, uh, I parked it out back. <laughs> You're riding in the Man, elementary school. That looks so badass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How many times do you say that these days? That's you... the first time I say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I've had. So I posted, <laughs> I posted the picture of me in costume. Yeah, yeah. To my social media account, and. I've had like five or six people say, "Man, you should dress like that more often." You should just do that. That should be your. <laughs> I'm dude. like, what the fuck, man? You, you want me to walk it around as me to, a cowboy? I'm like, are, do you want me to be like the that character, or are you saying like dress like a cowboy? You know what I mean? Yeah, so, dude. yeah it's a good look on you. I'm like, I hope any look is a man, fucking good look on me. Shit, fucking shout out to fucking tumbleweed Tommy <laughs> over here, dude. <laughs> go check out tumbleweed Tommy on Instagram. He's a delight. He's a delight. He's he's very fashionable. <laughs> And that's all I got to say about the that. most fashionable. He's uh he's very good. He knows how to do social media for sure. He does, or at least somebody he has, else. Somebody has that account to. does. <laughs> Tumbleweed he's a, Tommy. He's a savant, man. Now, would you he go just for? Speaks clearly. Never stumbles. Tumbleweed Tommy doesn't blow across the road. He just fucking walks down like a boss in his boots. It's amazing how many <laughs> outfits he has. Oh yeah, for that little side closet that that <laughs> closet behind him. Um. It's definitely not a case where somebody is telling him to do this stuff. No, right? it's not. Just guiding his hand. It's not that it's at all. him. He understands the algorithm of social media. There's nobody so behind well. the camera. It's riveting material. <laughs> There's no uh, abusive sister that takes advantage yeah. of him sexually either. The camera's there not moving around. It. Nobody's telling. <laughs> There's no. <laughs> I love how we just went. Up. It's terrible that that happens though. Yeah. We've seen it far too There's often. A, you got to look this shit up. So I'm not. Uh, well, go check out Tumbleweed Tomedy. He's a very fashionable, motivational individual, and that's all I'll say about that. Other than the other shit I said, but there is a real problem on social media. Of and I'm trying to bring awareness to this issue for fucking a year or so now. I think we have on social media. Um, there's a real issue with uh, mentally handicapped people on social media being taken advantage of. Uh, by their their siblings or whoever that's just trying to make a quick buck. Not only sympathy. the men, not only the mentally handicapped, but the physically destroyed and physically yeah, it's, unable. There's it's crazy. people that are completely paralyzed, and then yeah. you got somebody behind the camera saying, "Oh, this person's first time in a pool," and they fucking you know <laughs> like yeah, around change with them. their clothes, and it's like this person can't <laughs> even function. Yeah. Where are your parents? Or like, like put okay the the worst ones I've seen right that we've talked about. Yeah, or like the. You know, the person is in the chair and they can't move at all. This can't is going to be flagged arms. for fucking... <laughs> it probably will. Oh, and I'm not hating. Yeah, I'm just yeah. saying this. we're bringing awareness to this, awareness. okay? So the person can't move at all and it's a chick, okay? This girl can't move and she can, like, move her lips a little bit and her eyes. The body body can't yeah, move. Yeah. But they play some music thing and they're, like, going over her whole body and then the snap comes and then she's wearing, like, some sexy stuff, right? And she's in a wheelchair and can't move and this person, this camera's still going over, like, oh, hot, you're sexy. And... I feel the, that, it's her social media. It's not supposed to represent yeah. the camera person. It's representing the person in the wheelchair. But it's like, hey, look at my body. And what else do you think they do with that body? They yeah. had to undress that body to get it dressed into yeah, that exactly. sexy stuff. And Dude, then they put it on social media. That's fucked. Dude, and the worst part is I feel really awkward masturbating to all of it. <laughs> <laughs> like that's a, That is the worst part of the whole thing, man. But do you finish? Every time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was good. Um, yeah, bringing awareness. Yeah, to multiple situations, and then I am a psychopath. Um, <laughs> that's got to be a fetish to some people. I mean, that's why they post that shit, dude. It has to be. Well, it's clearly <laughs> no. I was joking, but I know. Um, like there's, it has to be what it is. Dude, it's I, it's weird because like people, it's like think about Dahmer the whole like yeah. Not just I've known about the Dahmer thing for a while. I was alive during it. You were alive during yeah. it, right? Like, and I was uh, fuck. I I can't remember what year it happened, right? But I remember hearing about it. Uh, and I actually worked with a dude that lived in the same as on the same block uh, when it happened. 
uh, like near that apartment house or whatever. He was in the same area. So that like I've heard multiple things about it, but the uh, it goes to the like, why do people uh, I don't even want to say the word, but like, why do they go after people of that nature? Why do they want to fantasize about that? It's because yeah. they're they have like a, a thing about control. They just have some of these people are the same there's a lot of people i think are the same as Dahmer. they just don't react on their urges you know or they do and they just don't project it you know yeah yeah. so i mean how many people are probably out there dming that account saying hey you got any other pictures you know any other videos it's fucked yeah yeah it is um but this is a perfect segue to talk about toxic people yeah toxic people man um psychic vampires uh I told succubus. you about that before you perked up earlier. Um, I'm going to give some definitions for these. For anybody who doesn't know, these are... Uh, I've had my fair share of these fucking people in my life, and I've I posed the question to Mark over here a few times because I'm, I'm confused. Like, eventually, I don't even know I'm around some of these people. Like, and I try to be, you know, regardless of what anybody thinks about me or whatever, your own personal opinion from what you've seen on the podcast... Um, I have a wild, wacky side, like a wild, wacky, inflatable arm flailing tube man, but I'm also like serious and all these different uh, things. And um, I've had situations in my life where I've had uh, more than I would like toxic people that have come into my life that I don't know they're there until like it's just like apparent. And I'm like, oh, fuck, now I'm in this situation. And part of my issue is, as I'll fucking discuss, is I I have an issue – because I am a, believe it or not, fucking extremely caring person about whoever's in my life, uh, even if you fuck me over, um, it's I have a hard time. And like with my own personal boundaries, I have a hard time watching. I have an extremely hard time <clears throat> watching people suffer that I know. Like, uh, like I could watch human suffering out there and be like, oh, it sucks to be in Pakistan and not shed a tear. But when it comes to people that I have a personal relationship in any sort of way, it's really hard for me to fucking look at uh, people and um, allow them to suffer in a way. Unless you fucked me over so bad that I'm just like, <laughs> I don't have to deal with you anymore. Yeah. But well, Then you're emotionally detached. Yeah, I'm just like, oh, fuck it, whatever, that sucks to be you. I'm not yeah. going to offer my hand and help anymore or whatever. Whatever that is, I'm not saying I'm a saint or this godly individual. I just I have a general caring about people that um, are in my my network. Um, um, so anyway, we're gonna talk about a definition of psychic vampires, um, and chime in anytime as we'll usual. Cut me off. <laughs> Cut me off as much as possible, and then I will talk about why you are a toxic individual. Got it. All right. Which is a trait of toxic individuals, cutting them off, which I read that, and I was like, man, I'm guilty of some of this shit. <laughs> I think everybody uh, does that, though. Yeah, I think, um, like, reading these, it, like, covers anybody. It's like, oh, you're nice? You're fucking toxic. The you're using that. The world's <laughs> toxic. Um, so a psychic vampire or energy vampire is a creature in folklore. This has nothing to do with, like, real people. It's just... It's just folklore uh, said to feed off the life force of other living creatures. The term can be uh, also can also describe a person who gets increased energy around other people, but leaves uh, those other people exhausted or drained of energy. Psychic vampires are represented in the occult beliefs of various cultures and fiction. Explain that in more depth, Mark. Well, I'm looking up something. I want to tell you. I'm going to tell you a definition of this one. Okay. <clears throat> I mean, it, it, it's very similar. Okay? Yeah, it's yeah. not the same, but it's similar. So a succubus is a demon or supernatural entity in folk- folklore. This is primarily in female form that appears in dreams to seduce men, usually through sexual activity, but it uh, takes the energy as well. So it, um, a succubus cannot drain or harm the man with whom she is having intercourse in this regard, but in modern representations... It's open to like a seductress that takes the energy from you, so it's like altered over time. So it takes your energy, takes your life force away. Yeah, yeah. And that's how it keeps on. It's by draining you. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I'm sure some people invite that. Like if you could just get laid while you're sleeping, do you, would you remember well, that? In, in a succubus way, I've we've talked about this before. It's like 
You've had something sh- like yes. you've been fucked it's by a, a sucky boy, haven't you? I, I don't. I don't think I was fucked. I mean, I didn't get fucked. That's for sure. My asshole's tight. Uh, oh. But it's like, yeah, succubus will be like on you. You can't move. It's there. You have sleep paralysis Paralyzed. when that happens. You had but, that, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's long. We talked about that on an episode a long time yeah. ago. I think yeah. I just asked you twice, and I think you answered me twice, and you're like, "Let's move on." But that's bro. okay. Yeah, yeah. It adds time to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, it, so it's kind of like a saying? comic where they <laughs> just repeat the same fucking joke twice, and people think it's funny. And then they anyway. still still they they laugh out of confusion instead of yeah, like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just said that right yeah yeah so a mental vampire is that what you, what it was psychic vampire psychic vampire okay so draining the energy I think that those people actually exist not in a folklore sense but just the energy that people have can be draining to others you know yeah. the type of energy they bring into the room can be draining I've had experiences in the past. Somebody walks into the room and automatically I'm just like, I'm in a bad mood. Yeah. And yeah. I don't, it's not like I'm trying to be. And I'm tr- like, I, I'm coming in happy. I'm like, hey, what's up, guys? Yeah. Yeah. And then this person walks in. I'm like, fuck, I just put a frown on my face because of the energy. Who that is they that have. person? Let's say their name on the podcast. No. <laughs> <laughs> this has happened. I a few actually times. have, I have in uh, parentheses, not saying any names. You know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, but yeah, it happens. Dude. It's It's a real thing for sure. Yeah, and the, I think they're more. It's like I have a question. I have uh, three questions at the end that I'm gonna, gonna save, but I think it's it's almost like um, chemical reactions and like I'm not a big hippie type of dude, believe it or not. As much as I try to pretend, I'm like a fucking stoner. Um, but the uh, I I think there's a lot to the correlation between chemical re- chemical uh production in people's brains to the personality traits like an external uh transitioning into an external type of reaction chemical you know external stimulus yeah. into an internal reaction you know what i mean kind what of i'm trying to say like science yeah like you like yeah <laughs> science so like you could come in here with a fucking bad attitude that's going to affect yeah. me in a way and i'll be i'll either go into a more positive way um, or it's going to fuck up my day. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like the, and I think that could be a good description of like, say psychic vampires. So like, if you're fucking having a bad day, they're going to be like on the fucking moon. Right. Mm-hmm. And then, um, if you're starting to be happy, it's going to piss them off Yeah, and they won't fucking, um, acknowledge it or even whatever. They'll just try to figure out a way to fucking ruin your life through chaos magic. Yeah. Right? Chaos <clears throat> magic is. I've heard people say the magic part, and I just I'm not in the occult or anything like that as much as I've fucking talked about it. But the um, it's just it's weird that that term chaos magic. It's like it's like a you know people just do shit like putting They're, a curse on you. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> a hex. I used to think that shit was real when I was a kid too, much like the Easter Bunny and shit. Ooh, yeah. This witch is gonna put a hex yeah. on you if you don't act right. <laughs> What's that fucking tooth fairy doing in my room collecting all those teeth? That's creepy. What are they doing with all the teeth? Yeah. You ever smell, you ever keep a, a bag of your kid's teeth and then later on you just take a big whiff of it? It's fucking weird. That's no. what I imagine. The, <laughs> that's what I imagine the uh, the fucking tooth fairy doing. I remember when, when, when Ari was younger, she was watching, I forgot which, what cartoon she was watching, but uh, they had like the, the tooth fairy, right? And it showed, like, okay, what does the Tooth Fairy do with all those teeth? And the Tooth Fairy in this particular cartoon eats the teeth. Oh, God So damn. it's just, like, just crunch on. Is this, on. like, a, one of those new, like, uh, non-educational? Yes. You know, but I don't remember what it, what, which going one off, it was. Going off I just on, remember specifically, this is fucked up. Going off on tangents, you remember, like, you know how, like, these days, like, uh, parents are complaining about how, like, cartoons used to teach kids shit? And oh, they absolutely and did not. <laughs> yeah. Ren and Stimpy. Yeah. Like, let's look at that. That Ren was just purely Ren and awesome. Stimpy. Ren and Stimpy, Rocco's Modern Life. J- just his, be- you know, it's, Rocco was that yeah, it's kangaroo. All, it's his best all friend about, was Heifer. <laughs> yeah, it's all about uh, these male characters sleeping in beds together. Like, yeah. Ro- uh, what Ren and Stimpy slept in the same bed and shit. It was like weird. They were like they would gay eat, couple. They would dude. eat pig faces. And yeah, like and fucking hit on uh, women. Johnny Bravo. The, yeah, the close up, <laughs> really grotesque scenes. Yeah, which I want to find an artist that can do those kind of. Oh, nice. that would be fucking awesome, especially cool. for the 
the mega cosmic. Yeah. yeah, that'd be sweet. Like the Havoc King, I want one of those for them. <laughs> it's like really fucking gross. Yeah, man. It, I mean, Rocco's Modern Life had the best friend Heifer. It was it was, he like was Australian, a little right? bit more. Yeah, Rocco was, but Heifer was supposed to be in the in the cartoon represented as a male cow, but yeah, he had yeah. udders, and a Heifer is a female cow. Yeah. So he's a, tra- so he's a transgender, transgender in a cartoon. We didn't even fucking there, realize. Yeah. It just ran front I think the, the difference time. is like it just everything was uh how it was. Like there was drag queens and all that stuff, yeah. but like nobody but was nobody screaming gave a shit about, about it. it. Yeah. Like, you know? It's just like, oh, cool. All right. Yeah. <laughs> World is crazy. Absolutely. There's also energy vampires. The term energy vampire is also used metaphorically. Refers to people whose influence leaves a person feeling exhausted, unfocused, and depressed without ascribing the phenomenon to psychic interference. Just just their presence alone. Oh, dude. Yeah, you get the flushing feeling. Up. Yeah. <clears throat> like when somebody walks in a room and they say something to you and you're like the back of your neck just like heats up or you just get like that flushed feeling like all the blood drained from yeah, your dude. face. It's just like I don't want to be in this situation because you make me feel uncomfortable by being here. Yeah. Do, do you think, like, out of those two things, you know what I was bitching about yesterday? The uh, person that I've yeah. dealt with, you know, where I was, like, really fucking mad. Um, right after I scolded scolded uh, David about being more <laughs> being positive, positive, and we person. have that positive episode, I'm like, I've been trying, guys. <laughs> Fuck, it's hard, dude. Well, like I said, there's like, a fine line between, yeah. you know, venting about your situation because everybody needs to talk about something and let that bottle open and yeah. you know, don't bottle it up. There are people like there are um, there are people that you deal with, and this is, goes for everybody. I'm sure that anybody listening has dealt with a person that you're like, I don't want to text this person back because it's gonna be like 50 fucking messages, yeah. and then you're gonna fucking sit there like, God damn it, I'm gonna have to fucking answer this person, or he's not gonna shut up. And then if you answer that person, they're gonna keep fucking going, and it's like, how do you stop without? fucking mentally crippling somebody and just going listen dickhead without like destroying especially if it's like somebody you work with and you have to fucking talk to him it's like how can you not get it to shut the fuck up man like this is like interactions like this don't have to be this fucking tedious classic case that might be a classic example of a fucking energy or psychic vampire for sure yeah because the uh, the amount of times I've talked about how this person like just fucking no boundaries they just and then when you set a boundary they just doop, 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 t- tiptoe past it watch you and then they're just like once they See get past it react then they're like just okay. full bore back to whatever <clears throat> bullshit they yep. they were doing and it's like that shit is exhausting when you have to I and I don't know what it is like there's these terms for psychic energy vampire and they seem pretty hokey to me like you know as much as it makes sense the term vampire is. They're sucking the life out of you, much like a real vampire. A real vampire? Um, the fake one. They suck on my ass for some yeah. reason. <laughs> you suck on this dick. Um, Ouch. But yeah, there's... I don't know. I, I kind of got lost in the train of thought thinking about a vampire sucking your dick. <laughs> um, yeah, it's... <clears throat> It's weird dealing with those type of people where it's like just the pure experience is exhausting and it doesn't like it's not uplifting. It's not it's not anything that benefits anybody. It's just like the narcissistic side, the sociopathic side, the the them just talking to fucking talk. This person asked me one time. I don't feel bad about talking about this. I'm just not saying names, but this person asked me one time. um he asked me something about my past, but it was literally just so he could talk about his yeah. fucking past. It's a segue into it. They're like, they they want to boast. They want to they want to get something off their chest about, hey, look how cool I am. Yeah, yeah. Without them starting the conversation, like, hey, look how cool I am. <laughs> you know. Yeah. It's like without making and it I, obvious, they they want to make it your idea to bring up that yeah. that whole situation. I got in that particular instance i got caught in this fucking thing it was like fine i'll fucking talk about because i don't talk about my past right yeah um just because i find it done like i don't i the whole like there's an ego to that when you start being like yeah look at me pounding your chest and like all this stuff and i i hate that side of of people um at least for myself i i cannot like i cannot contribute to driving an ego i just fucking can't um, especially being as good as I am, it's fucking hard to not do that on a daily basis. No, 
Um, but yeah, I got caught in this thing where it was like, ask me a question. It just caught me off guard. And I was like, I, I was just letting my guard down for a fucking second. Cause I, sometimes I feel like I'm too much of a dick to people when I'm like, cause I'll react, uh, sometimes negatively in the way that people come at me and they, they talk to me or whatever. Like, it's just like, I have this fucking, because I've had so many people fuck with me over my life and this psychic vampire shit. I just am very like, stay the fuck away from me. I don't yeah. give a shit about like. Oh, you're having a great day. I'm I'm glad for you're, you. Just fucking have your great you're day. You're cautious. Over yeah, yeah. I'm you're very cautious. I'm extremely cautious about who <clears throat> I uh, let in because of all of my. Um, I haven't had like, I've had some really bad shit happen to me, but like I've had, and I'm not blaming anybody. I actually take a lot of accountability and self awareness. The fact that I have caused a lot of my bullshit, oh, and I've, still to this day, that, like that's how everybody you know, should be. And because I I don't try to sit there and be like, oh, it's everybody else's fault. I try to analyze that so that maybe I don't make the same mistake again, even because I know I'm a little bit oblivious to as aware as I feel I am. I'm oblivious to some people like their intentions. And I try to fucking analyze what people do. And I've talked about a whole bunch. I try to observe and analyze. And I think some people think I'm being a dick, but I'm just I'm not trying to say, you know, I've talked about a lot of times I say no to people all the time. And it's like not because I know if I should say yes or no or whatever. It's because. And it pisses people off because I'll say, ah, I don't, I don't, you know, because I don't want to get into a thing where I have to say like, well, I have to think about this for five or six days so that I can accurately analyze what the fucking interaction we just had yeah. is. And I don't know what that says about me, but I just, I'm very well, fucking... That's just your way of communicating in that type of situation. Yeah. I've known you for years now, years and years yeah, and years. Yeah. And when I first met you, I could read the way you were and I knew how to communicate with you yeah, yeah. in that regard. So if you told me no, so for example, like, like I'll create a design when you had Aries, right. And we were making the team stuff and you're like, Hey you guys, if you have any designs pop them my way and <clears throat> either a, you'll improve it or B you'll scrap it and say no. <laughs> you yeah, know? Yeah. So I'd throw you something. You're like, eh, you didn't seem like you were all about it, but then a, you either altered it or B you just straight up said, no, I don't think this is a good idea. Or when you when I did put a, a design through, it's like, hey, uh, this one's not selling, so we're gonna scrap it. You know, you tell me straight up, and in your head, I know you're like, fuck, he's gonna think that I'm pissed at him, or think like, oh, this this That's sucks. A, yeah. And really, it's like, okay, he's making the best decision for that, his uh, business, or hey, this isn't gonna work. He knows how the business works, so I need to accept that. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm not looking at it like, oh, he thinks it sucks. I yeah, and I less. I appreciate that about you too, because like. <laughs> It took a while, I think, like doing all that and like involving other people yeah. and just like, you know, because I only have so many ideas. Right. I felt like I feel like I'm pretty creative, but it's like it floats into different projects and then eventually I can't be interested in, in like uh, that kind of stuff. Like yeah. That. Um, and it took a while, I think, to like be comfortable with telling people no, because like it's it is the the brand that I created. Right. And then like just i don't want to fucking piss people off and be constantly be like no 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 you know what i mean so it's the uh, figuring out over the time that i was doing that like figuring out a way to tell people no and explain why and like here you know like you're saying yeah. whatever that's hard to even think back to those times it wasn't yeah. that long ago I mean, it was like six years ago five years ago yeah and i was doing it for five six plus years i don't know but <laughs> um and then screen printing for a lot longer than that yeah. but um yeah, dude, that's that's wild to think about that stuff back then. I mean, like, you know what works and what doesn't, you know, and you have to think about that in regards to other people that you communicate with. So maybe that person coming in the room with that weird mentality or that negative energy, they know what they're doing, but they don't know how to communicate it. So you being able to read that, you already have a leg up on them, you yeah, know? Yeah. So being able to read that, maybe you can change your perspective and your mentality to block out that mental vampire, you know? Yeah, yeah. That's that's how I see it as as like an opportunity to try to block it out, even though I, I still get those feelings. Like when somebody walks in and I get drained, I'm like, fuck, I don't want to be here right now. Yeah. Because it's just negative fucking succubus energy. Yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> succubus energy, like you're at, a, you're at work and just I'm getting demon fucked. chicks are trying to fuck, yeah. <laughs> Sleep paralysis while I'm on the co those computer. Those would be incubi, dude. Dudes, <laughs> demons trying to fuck you. Dick you by. Dick you by. <laughs> Dick you bis. Thank you. Bye. Um, so there's a little history. Uh, the term psychic vampire was popularized popularized in the 1960s 60s by 
Anton LaVey and his Church of Satan. Oh, geez. Uh, I, I think this is the dude that like created the Church of yeah. Satan. Yeah. Yeah. He's a weird looking dude. Um, LaVey wrote on the topic of his book, uh, the Satanic Bible, and claimed to have coined the term. LaVey used psychic vampires to mean spiritually or emotionally weak person who drains vital energy from other people. Adam Parfrey attributed this time to LaVey in introducing the Devil's Notebook. Those are books. Probably find them on Amazon.com or some shit. Um, the terms energy vampire and psychic vampire have been used as synonyms in Russia since the fall of the Soviet Union as part of an occult revival. All our Russian fans are going to be excited about it. So I went to type something into Google as you were talking just now because <clears throat> I wanted to understand it, and I never thought about this before because you use the word Bible for Satanic Bible, right? Yeah. What does the word Bible mean? If we know it represents it's a good, good question. the book of Christ, right? It's the uh, How is well, it I think, a book of... I think Bible is a... Uh, I'm trying to think... I. I don't think it means uh it I don't think it mean it's a religious based term and I might be wrong. <clears throat> Let me finish this thought so that yeah. you can correct yeah. me if I'm wrong. I think it's a uh all encompassing authoritative uh doctrine. I think okay, that's so, what it is. So is there's, the, there's a couple ahead. different definitions, but the one I just looked at fits what you're saying. So yeah. uh the English word Bible is derived from a Greek term and it's I can't read greek so i don't know what that says uh ta biblia meaning the books so it's you know a collection of documents right authoritative i don't know could just be a collection of stories but then the most popular is you know the christian scriptures consisting of old and new testaments and then informal is a book regarded regarded as authoritative so that's what you're Damn, talking about close. in a particular sphere so you could have a cooking bible Tells you how to make things. You could have the violent professional yeah. Bible. <laughs> that would also be about cooking things in the microwave. Yes. <clears throat> yeah, I never. I I don't know why. I mean, yes, we knew the definition already, but I didn't know. Yeah, because you just think the Bible. Yeah, here's the Bible. This represents this because this word represents this because this is what I know. Yeah. But, Never really thought like, hey, what does Bible actually mean? <laughs> You're like, oh, it's I'll weird. take a copy of the Bible. It's like, yeah, but I wrote this the collection Bible. Collection of which Bible? It's, it's like <laughs> how to turn your nutsack skin into different kinds of animals or something. Taxi it's the Batwing nutsack taxidermy. <laughs> the scrotum Bible. But yeah, the word Bible. Just never thought about it that way. Interesting. Why did why did that strike your mind just now? I don't just... know. When you because when you brought it up that satanic Bible, when I think of Bible, I think of representing the Christian faith, right? Yeah. But you say satanic Bible, so is it representing the Christian faith in a negative way, or is it representing the satanic faith? And what in that regard, what does the word Bible mean if it doesn't mean representing the Christian faith? Yeah, you yeah, know? I got it. So I was like, so what does it really mean? It's just a collection of stories, which I probably already knew. I just didn't contribute the two. You know, yeah, interesting. We're learning stuff here today. Learning people are gonna be like, Wait, you fucking idiots! I knew that. Yeah, <laughs> they're, they're, people Duh. listen to this and they're, they're they don't know shit. They're just like <laughs> trying to learn from each other. They're trying to sound smart, yeah. but they're really dumb. For anybody that doesn't know what vampires are, <laughs> they think birds are fake. Yeah. <laughs> True story. <clears throat> um, so with this, it goes into toxic people. Um, and, uh, I wrote some types of toxic people, um, and the definition for these. And I, I am going to call myself out on one of them. I feel like I can be, uh, this way and I'll explain that. So feel free if you feel you, you're, uh, you feel like these are close. Mark Manning. He is a Pete. No, <laughs> um, <laughs> Types of to toxic people are conversation. Uh, this is the first one. The co conversational narcissist. Conversational narcissists, as you'd imagine, love to talk about themselves. Do you know anybody that does that, Mark? Several. Yeah. Several. Sometimes I do that. Um, and we all talk about ourselves in some context or another during conversations. Yeah, but it's it's not in those terms of like being a like a 
hijacking a conversation or yeah. whatever. Yeah, sometimes like today when I was DMing you guys, I was like, I could fit that because I'm just like, ah, you want to hear some shit about this? <laughs> David's contributing. I'm like, I don't give a fuck about that, dude. So I'm, <laughs> like, I'm just trying to fucking talk. And it goes all ways. Wherever we have issues, we all fucking sound off. Um, The straight jacket. The straight jacket wants to control everything and uh, everyone around them. Ooh. I don't really know anybody like that. So we, that we've might had tell some. Me that's we've me. had some come around every now and again. Yeah, but they disappear after a while when they find out they can't control. Yes, yes, <clears> I do <throat> know a few people like that, um, or have known. The emotional moocher, an emotional moocher, is known as a spiritual vampire. Well, a spiritual vampire because they tend to suck your positivity out or bleed you emotionally dry. Got that. The drama magnet. Ooh. Some toxic people are magnets for drama. Something is always wrong. Uh, always. They they reiterated that. And, of course, another one emerges once a problem is solved. That You know, that just happens to good people sometimes. <laughs> I've, had that, I've had a lot of shit happen to me that was surrounded by drama, but it's not like I tried to make it happen. So you're saying that happened. this is you're yeah, the that drama is a, magnet. That is a toxic trait of mine that has happened in the past. It's not so much the case right now. Not a lot of yeah, drama. Yeah, things are going okay, <clears throat> right? Yeah, things are going great right now, kind of. Yeah. You know, pretty good as far as I know. Um, yes, I know people like this. <clears throat> but in the past, absolutely. Drama magnet. There are, I sucked. think it's weird. I think it's more common than, than not where you just have issues happen and it's like trying to fuck... Say your fucking gutters fall off the house and then yeah. someone dies in your family or this or that. It's like, this is life, I think. But I think this is referring to people that invite this shit yeah. because they, yeah. a, lot of to- a lot of talking, <clears throat> a lot of um, not analyzing or being self-aware that you are the fucking issue or knowing it and just not, it's like not in- being, admitting it. being a- attracted to damaged goods because A... You like the damage, and it's because you can easily control, or it's like, hey, that's fucked up. It's an easy in, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, I don't know. The fucking chaos. <clears throat> um, The JJ. It, it means jealous and judgmental person. So, this is uh, referring to people that just have a tendency to lean towards jealousy or whatever because yeah. they fucking hate their own life or whatever um liars self-explanatory um the tank a tank crushes everything in its wake a human tank is always right doesn't take anyone else's feelings or ideas into account and constantly puts itself first i like how they said itself first referring to a tank is not by is not binary and it's just a tank dude i think they actually meant a tank in this one i'm not sure I identify as an Abrams. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> um, I know someone like that. Sometimes I feel like a tank when I'm just like, I need to make things happen. So you go in a tank but, mode and you got to just fucking yeah. get shit done. Um, so, okay. So this is where I was going to break into the questions. And before we end this uh, highly informative thing, I like this episode. I thought it was interesting. It's unique. It's talking about psych- psychotic people. Or just uh, nobody particular, but like, I've but had, everybody in yeah, particular. <laughs> but all of you listening, you're all guilty of it's all you. this. I want you, as you listen to this, start questioning and be like, "Am I fucking toxic?" And maybe just stop it. <laughs> all right. Some of you out there have an issue with fucking DMing me nonsense, and it's draining me. How? <laughs> there, this is a fucking real thing. There are some people on social media that fucking that, and please don't DM me and be like, "Is this me?" And if you do, if you have to ask that question, <laughs> it's probably you. But there are some people that I've experienced with the amount of followers that I have that show up and it's just like, God damn it. I get a DM and I'm like, oh, what nice follower is this? And I'm like, it's the same motherfucker all the time. <laughs> I've talked about this plenty of times, but it's like there are some people that just fucking suck the life out of fucking social media through <laughs> sheerly through their, their fucking brainwaves. Like just, just existing, <laughs> man. Um, you're gonna have people sending you just to f- sending you stuff just to yeah. fuck with you now. 
Well, I hope so because it'll be interesting <laughs> at least. But yeah. some of these <clears throat> fucking messages I get are just like, why, dude? And I don't want to turn people off and and be like turn them into fucking people that don't listen. If they listen, and I appreciate it, but jeez, man, have some fucking awareness when you send some messages. Is there a point to this? <laughs> I love memes. If you send in memes, that's great. But if you're sending me fucking like, there's uh, there's Republican a there's some points. weird shit I got <laughs> yesterday from fucking uh, somebody. And I was just like, what the fuck, man? I didn't I didn't tell you guys about it, but I was just like, I was so blown away, and then I got distracted by something else. I probably saw a squirrel or something. I'll I'll try and show if I can I, if it's a if it's not a video that disappears, I'll show you. <laughs> it was like, what the fuck? Do you remember that old lady that was sending us stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Not saying names, but do you remember that? I it was still like get it. Everybody's I, sh- I still get <laughs> responses on my stuff yeah, all the time, like, dude. Still it's like, get why, it. dude? Same person. What's going on? What is this? Um. Anyway, so do you have any examples, without naming people, of toxic individuals you've encountered? Yeah. I mean, specific examples like I was talking about. <clears throat> um. Walking into my old workplace, saying hi to everybody, and I walk in, and most of the people were just super like, hey, man, what's up? How you been? Yeah. Like, oh, I've been good, you know? Here's what's going on in my life. What's going on in yours? You know, just having a good conversation. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. Everybody's got a smile on their face. I'm like, this is that? okay, cool. I know that there's drama behind the scenes there, but in this interaction, everybody's positive, good energy. And then I walk into the office, and I'm like... <clears throat> going by one of the offices hey man how you doing yeah they just look up at me and they're like good and then they go back to their computer and start working i'm like okay (laughs) so not like oh hey mark how you doing you know yeah not that i expect somebody to get up out of their chair and shake my hand but i had my hand out and there was nothing i'm like okay that's awkward what the fuck did i do man so i left and was like okay i'm not going back to that office obviously obviously but when i left Went around and said bye to everybody. Stuck my head in there. Hey, I hope you have a good day, man. You know, uh, yeah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Went to shake his hand, and he just kept typing. He's like, didn't even say a word. I'm yeah. like, what the fuck? Yeah, that yeah. was draining, yeah, dude. Yeah. I, I like, I was like, I don't want to be here. Yeah. So I fucking left. That just ruined my <laughs> I fucking quit morning. My job. Well, that, that was my old, yeah, my yeah. old job. Yeah, and yeah. I just, I was there to just say, hey, you know, what's up, guys? So it was just really weird. I don't know if that was directed towards me, if he was just having a bad fucking Maybe, day, but yeah. damn, that's terrible yeah. energy. The way you test that is bringing somebody else and you're both sitting right? there with your hands. Like, what is going on? <laughs> um, I, yes, I have, I have people in my life currently that are, um, extremely toxic. Um, and, um, it's some are. I don't have that many. It's not like I kind of feel like I attract them sometimes. Right. And there's, there's something to that. You know, I started looking at it before we, when we were talking about this episode, I was like, I, uh, I did a little research to see if that's actually a thing. Do I attract? And there is, there is some merit to that statement. Um, uh, I'm not going to talk about why I think that is for me personally. I'm just going to maybe discuss like what, what happens in that. If I can, remember what was what i was researching it's not very good research if i can't remember um but uh i one of the questions is uh can people be toxic for some and not harmful for others like oil i made this question i didn't take this from anything um actually i wrote all three of these questions and i i'm not plagiarizing whatsoever um but i've always thought this like because you see i mean how many times have you heard a perspective from someone who's like, that's a toxic fucking individual or somebody will have an impression and be like, that's dude's toxic. But then this other group of people are like, no. And then you look at them and you're like, yeah, these are all good dudes. They're saying whatever. Yeah. Um, and I have a theory that I think maybe everybody has a little bit of toxicity in them. Um, and it's just, it is more pronounced when some kind of, people are together kind of like when you put oil in, and water together, it just separates or whatever. And it just feeds off of, or um, something to that regards, kind of, if I could equate it to a chemical reaction to something, certain <clears throat> people will vibe together 
um and then other people will just you you know you've met people where you're just like god dude this fucking dude yeah. and it's it's that interaction and that uh the chemical reaction in your brain to a certain personality like that dude that won't shake your hand like that little interaction is enough to be like man fuck this dude yep um now is he being toxic who the fuck knows you never you know and maybe he's like a delightful individual in certain settings in his personal thing but then when he gets around the wrong people then he becomes a toxic yeah. individuals there's also there's also the imbalance of like a person who you're around and is very positive and then at one point or another it just flips and they're yeah they're just a different person you yeah, know yeah. and is that because they're affected by somebody else or is that just because they're a product of their environment you know it's hard to tell yeah so it really you don't know if somebody's going through some shit having to deal with some shit that's a person or having to just be in a place that turns them toxic so yeah. it's really weird hard to read yeah I have that happen sometimes. I'm up up here and down here. You know, yeah. you guys have seen the gambit of my fucking emotional roller coasters with the, you know, you know what I've had going on in my life. But the um, some of the stuff I've dealt with over the years, it's like I even through all the all the bullshit, I try to stay positive and I don't bring it out. But then sometimes it's like more so than others, especially when you're dealing with like narcissists and um, like legitimately legitimate people that need therapy or counseling or whatever it's like that fucking shit can feed into you and then make you a, pe- a fucking walking turd walking yeah. around in the world and i have that happen sometimes like and i i really try to analyze that because i used to be i used to be an angry fucking uh pissed off person person which i kind of still am in a way i can't fully lose that turdness in, in me but um uh like i don't know i try to fucking squash some of it no matter what happens and try to just um in a sense not let a lot of shit affect me but it's much like uh bottling things up it eventually explodes out yeah you know anyway what do you think about that uh do you think people can be do you think any, anybody has the capability to be toxic or is it just like certain people are just toxic or are more I are think, certain people more toxic than others i think i agree with you in the, in about the the level of you know, there's like an imbalance going on. So you may be like at your level, everything's good. Everything's where it's supposed to be and you feel good. The people around you are good. Your environment's good. But something gets a little bit off and it just throws every chemical imbalance off in your brain Yeah. because that happens to people. And it could be a product of this one thing being introduced into the environment and it just fucks you up. Yeah. And I think that is a big trait that every single person has. They just don't realize it until it happens. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe they don't realize it ever, you know? Yeah. And they're like, oh, this shit is just, I just have bad fucking luck. No, it's, there's something in your life that's causing that imbalance. You just got to find what it yeah, is. Yeah, it's kind of like, um, <clears throat> what's the uh, elimination diet where you start getting rid of shit and it might yeah. fix stuff? You yep. know? Um, yeah, take one thing out. Okay, well, that I still feel the same. All right, bring that back. Put another thing out. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. I don't know. We've talked about it, but sometimes, sometimes I feel like I'm a. Uh, oh, let me bring that back. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> um, I can remember what I need to talk about. Um, sometimes I feel like I, uh, and I've talked to you about this. I feel like I have a tendency to attract. As much as I just try to get all of the bullshit out of my life, I have a. a, a uh, I feel like I have a tendency to attract. Um, toxicity toxicity into my life and it's i don't want it that's the fucking biggest thing but it's like there i i just feel like sometimes i do and i invite it in and um when i was like looking this up and i had asked google i was like do i attract people there's a lot to be said about it it's like the the um the essentially like um you know, when there's pressure over here and there's a lack of pressure, it just kind of equalizes. And it's it's sort of under that idea that, like, uh, people that care about their people or um, are honest or caring or whatever, it's like it attracts a person that desires that, but then they'll suck the energy out of it, um, like kind of like a psychic vampire. Yeah. And it's like <clears throat> there are – it's not necessarily that I'm a um, – like I'm only attracting because I got people like you and David in my life and, and Peter and everybody else that supported the, the group. 
but the it's like there is a side that sees maybe someone like me or you or whoever has like a similar kind of uh, mentality about things as an attractive option as opposed to just milling around with shit people all yeah. the time they do that too <clears throat> they do that too but then they also want it's like almost like a a way to elevate their shittiness by grabbing onto that and bringing it back to their fucking turd existence yeah. you know what i mean yeah does that make sense yeah it does it does yeah. but i mean there's also the the old adage right you are a product of your, of your environment yeah and that you can use that to elevate yourself or you can use that to pull people into your environment. Yeah, and yeah. It, it really affects people by throwing that imbalance in, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yep. <clears throat> what a delightfully depressing episode this has been. <laughs> hey, mind games, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I love it. I've, t- <clears throat> I've talked about um, that. I have, uh, I, you, you weren't a part of it, I don't think, but the uh, Psychology of Fight Club episode where it was, and I don't think I called it that either. I'm not. That's what I named the outline because yeah. it's like the psychology of I can't remember what the name of the episode was, but it's a while ago and it has to do with it's actually like a the, it was a two part series. and It was like pretty popular with people. Like uh, if you look at the the insights, people like that up those episodes because I was like breaking down like essentially like without saying it, taking the movie Fight Club and like breaking down different statements that they make or like quotable things yeah. and applying it to uh, the uh the hierarchy uh, of needs and shit like that. And it's, it's like, as I don't get into like this thing about like, this is the hierarchy of needs and all this shit, but it's like, it's, I say it without saying it. And it's, it's a pretty clever episode, but I, I talk about psychology cause I'm, I'm interested in human behavior. Um, I talk about it quite a bit. Like saying, I say weird human behavior. Like I got weird human behavior. Um, I'm an alien shit like that. Like I talk about that kind of stuff because I think it's interesting and I got more, I became more interested in the way people fucking their brain just <clears throat> fucking works and makes yeah. them do th- things partly because probably as a child, I I couldn't control my own fucking personal urges or like, or like own fucking compulsive behavior. Not like I was going around whipping my dick out like that compulsive killing thing. cats. Yeah. And- yeah. <laughs> But like the uh, well, we're not talking about that, man. We're still in Olympia, right? You That's just right. fucking shit. Jeez, that guy's still on the loose. Um, no, but like I, I over the years, I've become more interested in like, um, when people talk, I'll sit there sometimes, like, and I'm like, I know the movement I have in my head when I go like this, and I like my head tilts down, and I'm like, because I've analyzed myself, it's like I'm observing what. The, it's not like I'm listening to what you're saying, but I'm also observing how this is fucking going on in the brain, how it's yeah. coming out because of the, <clears throat> the uh, probably uh, the environment I'm a part of, how many weird motherfuckers I have interacted with in my life. Well, like you're, they, you're reading, you know, yeah. it's it's not just listening to, to what's going on. It's it's reading the body yeah. language. It's reading the area around the people. You yeah. know, I'm not saying like you're looking at their auras, but I'm yeah, saying yeah. they're like, I'm li- I'm. Testing their, your chakras, their environment. You know, you're, you're looking at their situation, where they're standing, how they're standing, what's yeah, around yeah. them, what's affecting them. They could be having a conversation with you, but they're completely thinking about the dude at the register in the coffee shop line. You know, that's like yeah. 20 feet away from them for some weird reason. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's like, oh, am I gay? You know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's what I. That's what I question every time when I talk to somebody. I'm like, is this dude gay? It's every fucking time. But yeah, it's 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 reading. You're yeah, reading. Yeah. People and people are books. Yeah. Metaf- metaphorically. I don't use it for any malintent either. I think it's just the self preservation tactic that I started noticing that I was doing. Because I'll sit there for a few days after an interaction, and be like, what the fuck did all this mean? Like, I'll sit there and I'm not even like giving any indication that I'm thinking about it. I'm like, it just pops into your head. You're like, fuck. And mainly because I'm trying to figure out what the fuck goes on in my brain, why things are different for certain people. And there's really no clearly defined objective to my fucking, I'm not using it against people. I don't go out of my way and be like, you said this, this one time, <laughs> Blah, you meant this. You're None just taking shit. notes yeah. after the conversation. Yeah. Fuck. Maybe one day I'll figure it out. I think it's more so like I'm trying to avoid, I'm trying to identify uh shitheads. So they're not in or around me. You know what I mean? Yep. That's you know, good, those though. motherfuckers will surprise you sometimes. <laughs> yeah, they'll they'll start yeah, out to up. be super cool. Like yeah. I've judged people wrong before. Yeah, like yeah. in it in both ways, right? I've judged people wrong. I'm like, man, this guy's fucking cool. I've had a good interaction, nothing but yeah. good interactions with him so far. 
We're going to have this great relationship. And then, boom, like you bring some toxic shit. And I'm like, oh, I didn't see this trait yeah. before. And now all of a sudden that trait is super prevalent and it's not going away. Yeah. And I don't know if I should tell that person about that trait or if I should just sit back and see what happens, yeah, yeah. you know? <clears throat> but then the opposite, I've had people come in and they're just like, hey, I don't know about this guy. He's got kind of a weird fucking mentality. Yeah. He's negative. And then comes in and he's just like has a mission and he gets on it and proves themselves. And, and you're like, wow, this person is really fucking cool. Yeah, yeah. And they, they stick with you, you know? Yep. <clears throat> yep. Anyway, fucking cool episode, man. I yeah, liked dude. it. It didn't, uh, it, it didn't. That's all. It, it, did. it didn't, man. It didn't disappoint. It fucking didn't. Yeah. It, Whatever it, it is, it, it didn't. It flowed the way it was supposed to. But yeah. that's because we have that chemical balance. Yeah, dude. No toxicity in here, you motherfuckers. Fuck you. It didn't, dude. Didn't. It fucking didn't. didn't. How would Theo Vaughn say something like that? Be like, man, this motherfucker didn't. <laughs> dude, I don't know how he'd say. His, his vocabulary the best, yeah. and the way he thinks shit up, that shit makes yeah, me crazy. laugh, Yeah, crazy. He's the best. Um, anyway, please go check out Mega Cosmic Adventure. I'm going to push that down your throats. Uh, if you don't accept <laughs> it, I'm going to continue to talk about it, or you can just stop listening to this podcast. Like most people have already done by this point in the episode. But we're up 800%. 80% of the people are uh, thinking that this episode was about them, which is crazy. Yeah. It's fucking nuts. They're dude. taking notes. There's uh, <laughs> Am I, I, I heard this. I watched this video last night, and it's called the uh, spotlight, spotlight Effect. Spotlight Effect. And it's the condition that most people carry with them where they think that everybody's looking at them in the room. Yep. And they think that like people are analyzing them. And they might be looking at you. You might be correct. But it's like they're going on about their life thinking the same thing that people are watching them. You know, you know most That's people... why people say, like, was that about me? Because they, yeah. they, everybody's so fucking self-conscious. Absolutely. And most people you know? are not memorable, which is yeah hard, to, hard yep, for people yep. to understand. Like, I could be... I could go into something thinking, okay, they're going to judge me for this, the way I'm acting in this certain point in time yeah, yeah. to this certain person, but I may never see them again in my life. Yeah, yeah. So why am I worried about that interaction so much? Yeah. You know, like if yeah. you're, if you're telling a cashier, cashiers or a waiter, you know, brings you your food, enjoy your meal. And you're like, you too. That's the only time they're going to remember you. They'll be like, what the fuck? They're not going to yeah. fucking remember that. Well, you know how many times that probably happens to every them? fucking it's, time. And the, have a safe flight. Like, you, you're too. like, man, I'm never going back to this <laughs> fucking restaurant, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> What's his name? There's a comic that does a joke about that. The U2. U2. Uh, Brian something or other. He's a, I, I can't remember. Um, but yeah, it's, yeah, that's maybe the only time they'll think about you for a few minutes and then you're fucking, no one gives a shit about you. Yeah. We're yeah. all temporary they'll, existence. They'll go back there. They'll go to, to the back and be like, oh, this dumbass said this shit to me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that may be the end of it. They don't fucking know your name. This, they're not going to write that shit yeah. down when you pay your check, and they're like, oh, that's his fucking name, yeah. guys. This fucking guy. <laughs> you see, this guy said you too. Let's find what him on social media. Moron. Let's find him yeah. right now. Hey, it's the you too guy. <laughs> I said have a fucking good meal. This dumb shit said you too. Dane Cook did a joke on that, but it was like about somebody crying in their car, right? Yeah, yeah, like somebody goes by and they're they're crying in the car. Oh, he's fucking crying. <laughs> yeah. Red Honda. Yeah. The guy was you fucking see that? awesome. <laughs> yeah. Nobody's uh, gonna fucking it's remember. Fucking awesome. Anyway, go. To, like I said before, go check out MegacosmicAdventure dot com. Follow us at MegacosmicAdventure uh, on Facebook and Instagram. I think we have zero followers on Facebook. I'm not sure. Uh, we got more Facebook. on uh, Instagram, but please check it out. There's a preview on the Vaughn Professional Podcast page. It's before. It's between episode 103 and 104. Uh, it's uh, preview Mega Cosmic Adventure one. I may end up just putting all the episodes on the bottom. Fucking do it. <laughs> like <laughs> until like people ask for an additional thing, but fucking uh yeah, go check it out. At least go check out one episode. Have a good time. And if you don't like it, don't listen to it anymore. No, and, don't just check out one episode. Check out the next episode. And the next episode. And the next one. And just keep listening to it until your ears bleed. Don't be fucking toxic. Go <laughs> check out the Just episode. listen to it and see what happens. Yeah. Maybe you'll get erection. Maybe you'll yeah. maybe you'll get a direction if that's possible. It'll like invert. Maybe yeah. you'll turn into some fat blob that just smells bad. I don't know. <laughs> Has flappy skin. And... <laughs> maybe you'll. No, that was my ear voice, dude. Maybe your flappy voice. Flappy skin maybe, in the water. <laughs> maybe your voice will change and then you'll start 
just creating this <laughs> new ego, you know? Yeah, yeah. You just listen to it. See what happens. Dude, I've been working on some voice. And not to get into continuing this whole uh, end of the episode, but I've been working on some great voices. And I hope I – like my whole like Have a King voice was supposed yeah. to be completely different. And then what came out was that. Like I listened well, what's, to it. it's what's crazy. the hard the hard part is we're gonna have to go back and listen to certain characters just so we remember them coming up with all these new yeah. voices. But I mean, you know, I I can do voices. I just don't do them really. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I can fucking do them. Well, we I just gotta we just gotta put myself in that situation to make the, me do them. The Habit King will be no <clears> issue because I practice by chasing my dog around the house and do the voice. <laughs> Come back here. Where are you Come fucking back here now? now? <laughs> I don't even think that's it, man. It's hard. I gotta listen to it again. You'll hear it. You gotta yeah. just. Repeat some of the lines. Yes. You'll be like, all right, yes, it's fantastic. We're, we're ready. Your furry pants. <laughs> um, all right, Mark. Well, it was a good episode. Thank you for coming here again. Right on. All right, later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.